To bless the Lord, you say. I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless the Lord. Sing I command my feet to leap for joy, you say. I command my feet to leap for joy. I command my feet to leap for joy. Oh, oh, so, so. Bless the Lord, command your soul, bless the Lord, say so, bless the Lord, so, so, bless the Lord, listen, command my soul to bless the Lord, you say, command my soul to bless the Lord, command my soul to bless the Lord, say, Command my voice to sing this praise. You say, Command my voice to sing this praise. Command my voice to sing his praise. Yeah. Oh, 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 so, so, oh, oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Command your soul. Oh, oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Say, So, so, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Command your soul. So, oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Command your feet, leap for joy. For joy. Command your feet, leap for joy. For joy. Command your feet, leap for joy. Feet, feet, leap for joy. Let's bless the Lord, you say. Bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord, say. Bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord, say. Bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord, say. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless 
Put your hands together, everybody. Listen, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. How many want to bless the Lord on this morning? Come on, get up off your seat, out your bed, off your couch, and help us. Let's leap for joy. Oh, oh leap for joy. Leap for joy. Oh, leap for joy. Leap for joy. Oh, I feel joy when I think leap about for joy. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy worthy. to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to be in Shiloh Cyber Sanctuary one more time. Good morning, Shiloh family and friends. Hallelujah. What a great day it is to be alive, to be in the land of the living. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Truly an honor and a privilege to be with you on today. I give honor to God the Father, the gift that is His Son, Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. So thankful to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. So thankful for our pastor, the great Reverend Dr. Robert F. Cheeks Jr. for giving me the opportunity to come before you this morning and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to our assistant pastor, Minister Constance Cheeks, we thank God for you and for our first baby. Brother Nico, we're so thankful for you as well. And to all of our uh, other officers, members, and friends of Shiloh Baptist Church, again, it is truly an honor and a privilege to be with you on this morning. And I won't keep you long, but I'll be finished when I get through, as Pastor Wood said. But turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, a very familiar bit of scripture. Uh, that I'm sure you have heard our Bible scholars. Uh, I'm sure you have heard. I'm sure you have read it. Luke chapter 18, and we're going to begin at verse 35. I hope you have your Bibles with you at home and are ready to read with me. And it reads, As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. God's blessed word for God's blessed people. I want to frame this conversation that we're going to have this morning on a simple question. And that question is, why 
are you shouting? Why are you shouting? Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come this morning just so thankful, dear God. Thankful for brand new day, brand new mercies, dear God. So thankful for your loving kindness that you've extended to us. We're so thankful for your faithfulness, dear God. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And we're so thankful for that, dear God. So thankful for this time and opportunity to hear a word from you, God. And so we're asking that you speak now, dear Father. Speak to us and through us, dear God. God, that you put the word in my mouth, dear God, that it comes out so that it is heard by all, that is understood by all. That, it, that this word edifies the body of believers, dear God, that we go stronger and more diligent and more faithful because of this word, dear God. God, I ask that you continue to bless those of Shiloh Baptist Church and all of our family and friends and all those connected to us, dear God. Continue to wrap your loving arms of protection and care around each and every one of us, dear God. Continue to stand up strong and mighty and tall in each and every one of us, dear God. God, we thank you. God, we love you. God, we praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Why are you shouting? As many of you may know, I have the privilege and honor of caring for my 90-year-old grandmother, Deaconess Maggie Pinkin, and my newly turned 71-year-old mother, Deaconess Carolyn Bush, both faithful, long, lifelong uh, members of Shiloh Baptist Church. These ladies definitely keep me on my toes. And every day, several times a day, I shout at the top of my lungs. I shout their name and then I wait for them to answer. And then I ask if they're all right. So I'll do it like this. Ma! Ma! And I wait for her to answer. And then I'll say, are you all right? I'll do the same for grandma. Most of the time, they answer right away. But sometimes they don't answer at all, which sends me in a complete panic. I keep shouting and shouting. I keep shouting and shouting until they respond. And their response has nothing to do with their hearing or comprehension of my words. Both of those functions are in tip-top shape for both of those women, let me tell you. They both have their reasons for when, how, and why they respond. Mom doesn't respond sometimes until I get close enough to her so she can grab me by my lips, pressing them shut in her nonverbal way, telling me, be quiet, stop shouting, I hear you, I'm all right. Grandma, on the other hand, when I ask her, Grandma, did you hear me shouting? She'll say, yes, I heard you the first time. Well, Grandma, why didn't you respond? She just shrugs her shoulders. I tell you, the shade of a 90-year-old woman is unmatched. What I know, though, is I'm going to keep shouting and shouting until I get a response. Now, some of you may be asking, well, why are you shouting in the first place? That is a very good question. But it's the same question I have for the blind man begging on the side of the road in Luke 18. Why are you shouting? Now, shouting means to call or cry out loudly and vigorously. And in those moments where you find yourself shouting, and I know we've all found ourselves shouting, have you ever thought, well, why am I shouting? Everyone shouts, like I said. Have you ever asked yourself or someone else, why are you shouting? And we've all had various reasons to shout. Various reasons. Anybody ever shouted for your favorite team? I know we have playoffs coming up right now, and I know some of you are shouting for your favorite team. Some of your favorite teams are sitting watching it along with you. 
Anybody ever shouted at your kids? Stop all that noise. Sit down somewhere. Someone may have even shouted at the driver that cut you off in traffic. And I know those shouts I can't repeat here in the cyber sanctuary. Some of us have even shouted in protest. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Some of us have just shouted out of anger or frustration. Just, ah! Anybody ever shouted in praise and worship, saying, hallelujah, God, I thank you? Any, anybody ever put their head back and just shouted just because? No? Come on, let's do it right now. On the count of three, I need you all to rear back and shout from your belly as loud as you can. You ready? One two, three, ah, yes, yes. There are so many reasons why we shout. Did that feel good? Some of you are still shouting. Stop, 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 stop. You're going to wake the neighbors. They're going to call the cops on you. Stop, 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 stop shouting. As I studied the scripture I read in your hearing, I found some reasons that answered the question, why are you shouting? Let's look at the first reason. You still have your Bibles open? The reason I'm shouting right off the bat is the first four words of verse 35. It says, as Jesus approached Jericho. As Jesus approached Jericho. I read it and I reread it and the Holy Spirit would not let me leave those four words alone. He said, I need you to fully embrace what those four words mean. So in order to understand what these words mean, you need to read the verses prior to verse 35. You need to read Luke 18, 31 through 33, which Jesus tells his disciples. He says this, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the son of man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. Now, Jesus is predicting his death and informing the disciples of all that will happen in the following days. He's letting them know the next steps in this journey are painful ones. This will not be a catwalk or a beautiful stroll through a bed of ease. Jesus knows what lies ahead. He knows he will be mocked and insulted and spit on and beaten and killed. He knows the pain he must endure on the cross. And yet the next step we read that Jesus takes is that Jesus approaches Jericho. Now understand this, in order to get to Jerusalem, most people traveled through Jericho. This journey from Jericho to Jerusalem was a difficult one. It was 18 miles of rocky, dry, and rugged terrain. It involved climbing about 4,000 feet from Jericho to the Mount of Olives. So when we get to verse 35 and read those four words, it lets us know that in spite of all that lied ahead, Jesus was still moving forward to his destiny. Jesus approached Jericho knowing it led to Jerusalem and the cross. You ask me, why are you shouting? I shout because Jesus knew in order to save a sinner like you and like me, he had to approach Jericho in order to get to Jerusalem. I shout because Jesus is the perfect example that our past, present, or future pain doesn't give us permission to press pause on our progress. Progress may involve pain, but push through it. Don't push pause because the process is painful. It is all part of your progress. It's like when I exercise, those few times that I do exercise. 
At first, my lungs are on fire and my muscles are burning. My chest is racked with pain. And then when this used to happen, I would immediately quit. Immediately quit. Has pain ever stopped anyone in their tracks? Think about it. Has pain ever stopped anyone in their tracks? Hindered you from what you needed to do? But you know, one day I thought, I wonder what's on the other side of this pain. I know I want to get stronger. I know I want to get better. I know I want to get beyond this. I know I want to get beyond this pain. But this pain, this pain can't be it. It can't be all I'm supposed to experience. I decided I have to push through this pain. And once I did, once I kept going, kept pushing, my chest stopped hurting and my breathing even now, I'm making some good progress. Some of you are experiencing some of the greatest pain you have ever felt in your life. It feels as if this pain is consuming you. You are experiencing physical pain, emotional pain, financial pain. But catch this. Don't mistake this painful point in life as your final destination. You hear me? Don't mistake this painful point in life as your final destination. This pain is only a step on your journey to your destiny. We have to be careful not to mistake a step for our destination. This pain isn't the end of you. It is only a step. And since it's just a step, I encourage you to take the next step and the next step and the step after that. Walk in step with the spirit and watch God turn our sorrows into joy. Jericho was just a step for Jesus, not his final destination. Hallelujah. Push through to the next step. Our ever-present God sees all that you are going through. He knows each and every tear you've cried. He knows your pain. Isaiah 66, 9 says, I will not cause pain without, without allowing something new to be born. Do you realize the greatness, the greatness being birthed from your pain? Hmm. Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble. You hear me? In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Let me put it like one of my favorite singers put it. He put it this way. He said, keep on pushing. Yes. He said, mm -hmm. I can't stop now. Move up a little higher. Some way, somehow. Cause I've got my strength and it don't make sense not to keep on pushing. I wish I had some backup singers so they could sing this part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on pushing. Yes, we got to keep on pushing. Hallelujah. Keep on pushing. So if you ask me why I'm shouting, I'm shouting because I'm pushing past the pain. I'm shouting and I'm pushing. I'm pushing and I'm shouting. I'm shouting and I'm pushing. Come on, tell those folks at home, keep pushing, keep pushing. This pain can't stop me. This world won't block me. I'm pushing. I'm pushing past the pain of 2020. You hear me? I'm pushing past that pain. And I'm pushing past this pandemic. 
Come on, we got to make up in our minds. We got to tell ourselves each and every day, look yourself in the mirror and say, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Come on, tell the folks at your house, keep pushing, keep pushing. Tell yourself, keep pushing, keep pushing. I just heard someone else ask me again, why are you shouting? Let me tell you another reason why I'm shouting. I'm shouting for position. Now, position is the place where someone or something is in relation to other people or things. It is the place where someone or something should be. Have you ever found yourself in exactly the right position? Exactly where you should be? Whether it be that right spot in your bed or the best seats in the house for your favorite musician. The right position at the right time doing the right thing. Being in the right position can have a huge effect on making progress toward your destiny. We learn from verse 35, you still have your Bibles open? We learn in verse 35, the position of the blind man. He was sitting by the roadside begging. Because of his position, he is in a prime location to hear everyone that passed by en route to Jerusalem. I'm sure because of his position, he benefited from the many travelers who were headed to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast at the temple. Little does he know that his position on this particular day will change his life forever. On this particular day, the crowd that passed by had a different energy, a different sound. I'm sure this was a familiar spot for him and he was used to the normal noise uh, but today this sound was different can you imagine the sound the excited chatter the shrieks of joy all talking about one man can you just hear it i think that's jesus of nazareth i think that's the carpenter's son you know he is healed you know, he raises the dead. Can you just imagine the chatter going on? Just like the blind man that day who sifted through the crowd noise and heard some things he knew and a sound he had never heard before. But listen, his position presented him an opportunity of a lifetime. I know some of you are saying, why is the position of this poor man a reason why you were shouting? Some of you are saying, what a terrible position he's in. He's blind on the side of the road begging. But I say to you, God can use you wherever you are and with whatever you have. Stop waiting for God to give you more and move you from your current position before you feel like you can give more and move. You can make a difference in this world where you are with what you have. You got to use what you have where you are. Some of you are waiting for more money, more education, a bigger house, a better job, more time. But you got to use what you have where you are. Don't believe me? Let me call some witnesses. Come here, little boy, with your lunch, with your two fish and your five loaves of bread. That lunch, if you kept it to yourself, would have just fed you. But because you shared it, because you gave it to the world, even though it seemed insignificant, fed 5,000 with, with baskets left over. Come here, David, who was only delivering some cheese sandwiches to his brothers but was able to defeat, defeat a giant with only a slingshot and five smooth stones. Come here, blind man, who even though he was blind, he could still hear and he could still speak. You gotta use what you have where you are. Some of you have even started successful new businesses during a global pandemic 
while in quarantine. Don't tell me God can't use you where you are with what you have. Look, God taught me this lesson about nine years ago when I found myself out of a job. I had to really look at what I had and where I was. I knew I had a small amount of money and an entrepreneurial spirit and the gift of helping people. Because I was willing to use what I had and be thankful, God blessed me with a business that I absolutely love. Even in a pandemic, he continues to bless me. And can I tell you something? He'll do the same for you. Because of this blind man's position on the roadside, he was in the right place at the right time to have an encounter with the Savior. He heard the crowd going by and he asked what was happening. Look, I am shouting because he is displaying to all of us how to fully take advantage of our current position. Somebody shout position. All right, listen, in verse 37, the crowd told the blind man in response to his question, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now understand this, Jesus is about 60 miles from home, but his reputation precedes him. And he had no Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat, none of these things to get the word out. No cell phone, no re regular phone. He had no way to get the word out except by word of mouth. But his reputation precedes him. News about Jesus has mesmerized the crowd and created an excitement Jericho has never experienced before. Jesus' many miracles, his theological battles with the Pharisees and Sadducees, and his incredible teaching had crowds following him wherever he went. The word about Jesus spread like wildfire. The crowd knew who he was, and they shared that info with the blind man. Which makes me wonder, when we are in our crowds, what are we telling the world about Jesus? Are we telling them anything about Jesus? Would they be surprised to know we are even Christians? We are in a lost and dying world. We know the remedy, remedy but do we share it? Romans 10, 14 puts it this way. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Are we telling anyone about Christ? I heard a preacher say that Christians ought to be lostologists a specialist in the lost. As a lostologist, we should be seeking to guide the lost to Christ. That should be what we as Christians specialize in. Are we afraid to share because our at home or our work image doesn't line up with our church image? Hmm, something to think about. Which you does the crowd get to see? I'm so glad that Jesus' image that led the crowd to share the good news of his coming was the same in public as it was in private. It was the same in front of the crowd as it was away from the crowd. I'm shouting because Jesus shows us that our character needs to be consistent in order to get the attention of the crowd and point them to Christ. Oh, you asked me why I shout, I'm shouting. I've been shouting from verse 35 to verse 37, but in verse 38, it's the blind man's turn. In verse 38, he let out a shout that could be heard over the crowd. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Can you imagine the shout that pierced the air? Can you imagine that? I'm sure it caused the crowd to 
look around and wonder, what was that? And try to look and figure out who said that? Who is shouting? Why are you shouting? And look at what he said. He just didn't shout, shout, Jesus, Jesus. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now he was told Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, but his faith proclaims so much more. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Other translations say hearing the good news about Jesus Christ. And he heard what the crowd said. He heard the good news about Jesus Christ. And his faith told him so much more than that this is the carpenter's son. He heard what the crowd said. He heard the crowd say, it's Jesus of Nazareth. But his faith said that he is so much more than the carpenter's son from Nazareth. By calling Jesus the son of David, he was giving him the title of Messiah. Because the Jews believed the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, would come through the bloodline of David. He proclaimed by faith that the Savior of the world was here and he needed to get his attention. Dean Griffin, if you're watching, he was doing his version of Pass Me Not. He was saying, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. We should shout like the blind man, calling on the anointed one of God to have mercy on us. God of my salvation, my King of kings, my Lord of lords, help me. Anybody need help from the Lord on today? Then cry out like the blind man, Jesus Son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, you ask me why I shout. I'm shouting because the blind man is using what he has where he is. He's using his voice. While still positioned on the side of the road to get the attention of Jesus, he shouts. Now, after hearing the shout, of the blind man. Verse 39 says this. You still have your Bibles open? It said, those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. When you look at this, those who led the way are leaders. And all of us are leaders in our own right. Are we silencing the ones we should be leading to Christ? Are we muffling the cry of those in need of deliverance because it doesn't fit into our plan? We often see the struggle of those around us, but we turn a blind eye to their pain. Shouldn't we be trying to get to Jesus and shouting along with those in need? If you see someone in pain, if you see someone in trouble, if you see someone troubled, struggling and you hear them crying out to God, don't shut them out. Shout with them. Bombard heaven on their behalf. Shout with them, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on my sister. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on my brother. He's poor. He's blind. He needs you, Jesus. Now that's what should have happened. That's what should have happened that day. And that's what should happen every time we hear the cries of those in need. It should trigger something in us as Christians to cry out to God on their behalf. The other night I heard a piercing screech in the middle of the night. It sounded like a woman screaming. I thought, Oh gosh, should I call the police? But I immediately began to pray and thank God as I started to pray, a squad car drove by. I bombarded heaven on her behalf. Now I may never see her or meet her, but it doesn't mean I can't talk to Jesus about her. We as believers 
who can see Jesus need to help the blind see him by taking their hands and leading them to Christ. But we so often fail to do this. But let that in today. Let's lead the way to Jesus. Even though those who led the way failed to lead the way on this day, this blind man still showed persistence. They tried to silence him. But you know what he did? He cried out all the more. Now, when you're reading the scripture, when you study it, it says in verse 39, his shout is different from his shout in verse 38. His cry is different. They even use a stronger word for it in the Greek translation, which means to cry or shriek. Can you imagine the sound of his anguish and desperation? Desperation has a sound attached to it. Has anyone ever heard the sound of an animal caught in a trap? The very sound will pierce your soul. It is a desperate cry for help that persists until relief is obtained. Like the blind man, we must be persistent in our pursuit of God. Though situations try to knock you down, be persistent in your pursuit. Though people try and shut you up, be persistent in your pursuit. Cry out, cry out even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If you can't get all of that cry out, just cry out, Jesus. If you can't get all of that out, cry out, help. You ask why I'm shouting, I'm shouting because you can't shut me up. You may want to, you may even try to, but you can't. And because of this blind man's persistence, cause I'm gonna be persistent like that blind man, verse 40 said, Jesus stopped. Ooh. Anybody know about Jesus stopping by your situation? Anybody experienced that when you cried out to him, he heard your cry and stopped to see about you? I shout because Jesus paused and he paused with a purpose. He paused and said, bring him to me. I shout because our persistent pursuit of Jesus pulls us into his presence. And there is nothing like the presence of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody been in his presence before? We know that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. That comes with being in his presence. Anybody experience the peace that comes with being in the presence of God? There is no place I'd rather be than in the presence of the most high God. Oh, you ask me why am I shouting? I am shouting because Jesus cares enough to ask. Jesus asked the blind man this probing question. What do you want me to do for you? I always thought that this was quite an unusual question because Jesus can see that the man is clearly blind, but I think it's a test. It's a test of the blind man's faith. And we take that test every time we pray. Are we believing God to do the impossible? Have we prayed for the absolutely ridiculous? I read a quote that said, if the size of your prayer for your life isn't intimidating to you, there's a chance it's insulting to God. Hmm, Think about that. We serve a mighty God who has done, can do, and will do great and wondrous things. I dare you to try him for yourself and watch him blow your mind. Believe God for the impossible. Now Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? And he replies, I want to see. Jesus cared enough to ask and the blind man had enough faith to answer. His faith said, I'm talking to the great healer the one who healed a man with leprosy, the one who healed a paralyzed man, the one who even raised a widow's son from the dead. Surely 
He can help me see. Jesus, I want to see. This should actually be our request every single day. Jesus, I want to see. Open my spiritual eyes so I can see you clearly every day. I want to see where you are. I want to see where you're working so that you can invite me there. I want to see. Some, show me where you are working, God. Show me where you are working so that I can be there. Anybody else want 2020 spiritual vision? You ask me why am I shouting? I shout because we serve a right on time savior. As the seasoned saints would say, he may not come when you want him, but he is always right there on time. And he answers an immediate need immediately. Hallelujah. Jesus says to the blind man, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight. Whew. The blind man has passed the faith test. And because of his faith, he can immediately see. The key to our healing and deliverance is already inside of us. God is waiting on us to exercise our faith. James 2 and 22 says, you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. What are you believing God for that you have yet to put action with him? A preacher said of the thousands of promises in the Bible, some God places right in your hands, but most he places within our reach. So we have to participate in order to receive them. God is waiting on your participation. So go ahead, send out that resume. Get your business plan together. Register for school. Whatever it is, you know what you need to do to put your faith with your action and watch God work. Hallelujah. You ask me, why are you shouting? I'm shouting because Jesus, Jesus shows us not to let pain impede our progress. I'm shouting because because of his progress, he met a blind man in the perfect position to receive a blessing. I'm shouting because the blind man persistently pursued a caring savior that stopped by to see about him. And his faith led him to answer one of the most important questions of his life. And because his faith, and because of his faith, he was immediately healed. I'm shouting because the blind man's praise was as immediate as his healing. You still got your Bibles open? Look at verse 43. Verse 43 says, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus praising God. Our immediate blessing should come with an immediate praise. As soon as we are blessed with a new day, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Blessed with breath in our body, thank you, Lord. Blessed to be clothed in our right mind, thank you, Jesus. When you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you, your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah. It should cry out with an immediate hallelujah. Not a pumped or primed hallelujah, but an immediate hallelujah. Come on, take at least 10 seconds to give God praise. Come on, right where you are, hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, and immediate praise for all that he has done. I shout because the blind man shout, it started off in anguish and despair. But when Jesus stopped by, he turned it around. And now his shout are shouts of joy and shouts of praise. Our deliverance, our healing, our restoration, it's not just for you. It's also for those around you. Look at, look at what happened. Once the blind man is healed, he begins to follow Jesus, praising him all the way. And those who were around saw this. They began to praise God right along with the blind man. Those around you need to see you set free so they can be a witness of what God can do. 
I've got a reason to shout. I shout because praise is contagious. Look at verse 43. Verse 43 says, when all the people saw it, they also praised God. Praise is contagious. As I see what God is doing in your, in, in, doing in your life, you shout and I shout. As I see him bless you with a new job, you shout and I shout. As I see him heal your body, you shout and I shout. And as I shout and you shout, then others see us shouting, then they shout. Soon your neighbors are shouting when you shout. Soon your neighborhood is shouting when you shout. Then your city is shouting when you shout. Then the state, the country, the world. Praise is contagious. Just like you can catch a cold, catch a praise. Catch it, catch it, catch it. You ask me, why are you shouting? I shout because Jesus approached Jericho and continued on to Jerusalem. <laughs> and when he got there, they handed him over to the Gentiles, like he said. They mocked him, like he said. They beat him just like he said. They crucified him just like he said. I shout because on the third day, he got up just like he said. He got up just like he said with all power in his hand. I shout because death couldn't sting him. Because hell couldn't contain him. I shout for a risen savior. I shout because my redeemer lives. I shout because I just can't keep it to myself. I shout because you can't shut me up. I shout because he's coming back for you and for me. I have a reason to shout. You ask me why I shout? I shout because Jesus saved me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You ask me why I shout. I shout because Jesus saved me. He stopped by right where I was. He saw that I was heading for certain damnation. He saw that I was heading on the wrong path and he stopped by to save me. And he is right here, right now, stopping by to save you. If there is anyone watching this on today or listening to this on today, and you don't know the Jesus that I'm speaking about, you have never received him as your personal savior, the door of the church is open right now for you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You want to know the reason I shout? I shout because he saved me. And now I get to live out eternity with him. So that door is open for you as well. Shout unto Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he hears your cry and will receive you into his kingdom. Maybe you know the Jesus I'm shouting about and you are shouting right along with me, but you just don't have a church home. Can I tell you that the Cyber Sanctuary of Shiloh Baptist Church is open for you. We want you to join us. Be a virtual member, be a real member when we can get back into the sanctuary. The information was right on your screen. Uh, so please join us, say it in the comments that you want to become a virtual member of Shiloh Baptist Church. This is the greatest church this side of heaven who love God and love God's people. So join us if you will. Join Shiloh Baptist Church. The door is open for you. We thank God for you on this day. So I'd say, why are you shouting? You ask me and I say, because my Savior Hallelujah. We bless God for you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your attention. If you wrap your arms around yourself and squeeze real, 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 real tight, I'm sending hugs and love from me 
to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I got bless God for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord our God. We thank God for such a powerful message on this morning. Thank God for the message and thank God for the messenger. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done and he continues to do. Thank you so much for sharing with us in today's service and for sharing with us in today's communion service. The first communion of a brand new year and the first month of a brand new year. To God be the glory. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and grab your elements. Go grab them now. And we will uh, commence our communion service by asking the Lord's presence and his blessing. God, thank you so much for how you've been with us throughout the course of this entire morning. God, thank you for blessing us with your presence by way of your preached word. Thank you for speaking to each and every one of us on this morning thank you for using your woman servant we pray god you pour back into her as she has poured out unto us we thank you even for that word that will live in us through the days that you are so gifted to us uh, we thank you even now that god we can share in the remembrance of what your son our lord and savior jesus the christ has done and continues to do for each and every one of us thank you god for jesus i ask now god as we partake in these symbols of his body and his shed blood that god you would allow us to be encouraged to be reinvigorated to be inspired god to be anointed afresh to to receive all of what we stand in need of at the outset of a brand new year we thank you for healing deliverance and ultimately god we thank you for salvation god we ask that those who partake in this might recognize this as the body of christ and I pray, God, that even those who stand in the need of, of a miraculous move in their lives, that God might they experience it by sharing at your table. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Bless these symbols that we all are sharing in our residences and our the comforts of our own homes. We thank you even now. In Jesus' name we pray and we all said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. On the night, the Lord supped with the disciples. That last supper in the upper room, he took bread, he broke it after they had eaten. He said, this is my body. I want you to break this and do this and eat this in remembrance of me. Let us do as they did on that night. Amen. Amen. In the like same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the new testament in my blood, the new covenant in my blood. Do this. Drink this and do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink as they did on that night. Amen. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Come on, let's thank the Lord right where we are for this privileged opportunity to share and to sup and to commune at his table. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And even as the scripture tells us, and as often as we do this, not only do we proclaim the Lord's death, but we also declare that the Lord is on his return. And how many are grateful to know that the Lord is on his way? Ride on, King Jesus, ride on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, to God be the glory. The Bible says, and they left out of that upper room singing hymns and songs and praises unto God. Bless the Lord our God right where you are. We're going to have our music ministry take us on out. But the Lord our God is good. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you again. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing with us today. Again, share the services. Invite somebody back to come share with us again on another Sunday. But we do indeed thank God for you being with us right now. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord's countenance shine round about you. And might he grant you not only with his peace, his presence, but also his power. We thank you, God, for what you've done. And we thank each and every one of you. May you bless the body of Christ, Shiloh Baptist Church, all of its viewers, all of its virtual members, all of the disciples attached to the ministries of Shiloh here at Odrick's Corner, McLean, Virginia. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say it. Amen. God bless you. See you on the next service. is give God your best worship. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus.
Come on, lift up your hands as we sing this worship song. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. We want to dwell in your presence, God. Dwell in your presence, God. Come on, shine, Lord. I want you to get your mind ready and your hearts ready to receive the word. As we sing this worship song that just says, in your presence, there is peace. In your presence, I'm released. Nothing can harm me because I'm free. So, Lord, hide me. In your presence, there is peace. In your presence, I'm released. Nothing can harm me. I am free. Oh. Yeah. 